So let's continue our lesson. Previous lesson we stopped at 1.2 problem solving methodology. So for today we will have 1.3 reviews on descriptive statistics. So in reviews on descriptive statistics here we will learn to summarize data using measure of central tendency, measure of variation and measure of position. Okay, let's change the color of the pen. Right. So then we recall back a little bit about the parameter and statistics. So what is parameter? Parameter is a numerical value, number that represents population. And statistic is a numerical value or number that represents sample. Okay, so before we go further, let us learn the rule of thumb for decimal places. So in general, if your calculated value should be rounded to four decimal places. So what does it mean? For example, you have 3.3333333. So you should round your answer into four decimal places. It will become 3.3333. Okay, another example, if you have the answer 1.666666 and so on, so the final answer will be 1.6667. So, rounded your answer into 4 decimal places. If the unit is given, so remember, if your values have unit, either centimeter, minute, day or and so on, please use the unit. For example, RM. Okay. The decimal places for RM is two decimal places. Okay. Let's say you have RM 10.0002. It will become RM 10.00. Okay. So you should round it in according to the decimal places with the unit. So bear in mind on that one. Okay. Let's move on. 1.3.1 measure of central tendency we want to describe our data using measure of central tendency okay in measure of central tendency sometimes also called as measure of average say so in measure of average we will have the mean median mode and mid range so i think you familiar with this word because you have learned this one before in your secondary school right so the measure of central tendency i used to describe an entire set of your data using central or middle kita nak describe data tu using central or middle tengah-tengah okay so don't worry guys we will look at the example first is mid range july tengah mid range so what is mid range mid, mid range is a rough estimate of the middle anggaran kasar titik tengah how to calculate mid range so we have the formula here mid range is equals to x min plus x max divided by 2 x means means that your lowest value your smallest data x max is your highest value your highest data data yang paling kecil tambah data yang paling besar bahagi 2 right you will get the mid range so for example you have this one 2 3 6 8 4 1 so what is the smallest data 1 the highest data is 8 so 1 plus 8 sorry 1 plus 8 divided by 2 you will get 4.5 so the 4.5 is your mid range so next we have mean now we have mean so what does it mean by mean mean is the sum of the values divided by the total number of values jumlah data bagi dengan bilangan data hasil tambah data bagi dengan bilangan data so we have two population mean denoted by mu okay these are the formula summation of your data divided by total number of data so, for example, eh, no, we have sample. So, sample denoted by x bar. Summation of your data divided by number of your data. So, look at the example. Find the population mean and sample mean for this data. So, we have this data now. 
So, how to calculate the mean? You just sum up the data and divide it by number of data. So, we have two here, mu and S, S or X bar. So, here will be X bar. So, please correct your notes, mu and X bar. So, you will get the same answer. Why the same answer? Because use the same formula. Just notation is different. So, we know that the formula to calculate mean for population and sample is similar but the notation is different population mean the notation is mu sample mean the notation is x bar okay next so we can use our scientific calculator this one or this one to calculate our mean so you can follow the instruction here to calculate the mean Okay, either you use manually or you use calculator, the answer is similar. So it's up to you. You want to use calculator or you want you just take the values of a calculator or you want to calculate it manually. So please follow this step. Okay. Okay, next after mean we have median. Titik tengah. Median. Median is the middle number, nombor yang tengah, of n ordered data. Smallest to largest. So, it's very important for you to arrange your data from smallest to largest in order for you to detect the median. Okay. So, for median, we have two cases. First one, if your data is in odd data. Okay. Data you data, odd is ganjil. So, if your data is odd, the median is x and divide by 2. You will get the middle. For example, find the median of this data set. 4, 3, 1, 2, 5. First, you must arrange your data in smallest to largest. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, where is the middle? Here, 3 is the median. So, 3 is the median. Titik tengah. So, how about your data is even? Ada okay, data yang genap. So, xn over 2 plus xn over 2 plus 1 means that we have to divide by 2. For example, you have 4, 3, 1, 2, 5, 9. We have 6 data here. 6 is even. So, first you arrange 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9. And then you sum up here. Find the middle. So, 3 plus 4 divide by 2. So, 3 plus 4 divided by 2 is equals to 3.5. So, the 3.5 is your median. So, we go very fast here because you have learned this before. Alright. This is the properties of mean and median. So, the mean is unique. Mean is effective, affected by extremely high or low values. We call it, I, we call it as outlier. Okay. Um, right, this one the mean is not appropriate average to use if the shape of the distribution is skewed. We will use median if your data is skewed. Alright, the last one we have in measure of central tendency is mode. So, what is mode? Kekerapan. Mode is the value that occurs most frequently in a data set. Highest frequency, nombor yang paling banyak berulang dalam sesuatu data. For example, if you have data set 163785, is there any repeated values here? No. So then the mode is not exist. B, we have 1637835. Is there any repeated numbers here? Yes, we have number 3. Repeat 2 times. So, 3 is the mode. Right. So, look at here. C, if the data set 1637385, is there any repeated numbers? Yes, we have number 3. Repeated 3 times. And we have number 7. Also repeated 3 times. So, we have two mode here this is 3 and 7 okay mode can be there is no mode mode can be more than one okay so we have the mid range we have the mean we have the median and we have the mode so that's all for the measure of central tendency so let's what we have next Okay, from the mean, median, mode and mid-range, we can identify the shapes of our data distribution. Macam mana data kita distribute? Ok, 
Okay, the shape of the data distribution, we have the first one, you call it as symmetric. How do we know that the, our data is symmetric? We look at the values of the mean, median and mode. If our values of mean, median and the mode is similar, we call it as symmetrical shape. Okay, your data will look like this, symmetrical. It looks like a bell shape. Okay, how do we know this is symmetrical? This one. If the value of mean equals to median equals to mode. Right. Next. Positively skewed or right skewed. Tiros ke kanan. How do we know that our data is positively skewed or right skewed? When your mean is greater than your median is greater than the mode. You have calculated your mean. You have calculated your median. You have calculated your mode. So, if your mean is greater than the median, greater than the mode, your shape is right skewed. So, if you look at here, right skewed, here it skewed at the right, tiros ke kanan. And notice here, there will be peak at the left. Puncaknya sebelah kiri, data banyak sebelah kiri, most of the data at the left. So, it is a right skewed. When your mean is greater than the median, is greater than the mode. And the last one, we have negatively skewed or left skewed. Tirus ke kiri. How do we know that the left skewed? When your mean is less than the median and less than the mode. Okay, the shape will look like this. Okay, we have here. Alright, so if you look at the graph here, it is skewed to the left, tirus ke kiri and peak at the right. Puncaknya di kanan. Most of your data at the right. So, please remember these three shapes. Symmetrical, positively skewed or right skewed, negatively skewed or left skewed. Okay. In reality, median can be greater than mode. Sometimes, median at the middle can be um, greater than the mode but less uh, greater than the mean. The mean. So, in that case, look at the mode. Right? In that case, look at the mode. So, let's look at example. Okay, example 1.3. You have this data set. 13577. Okay, so we calculate the mean. The mean is 5.1667. Sometimes, population mean also called as true mean. And then, we calculate sample mean. So, same. The notation is different. Alright. So, here. The mean is 5.1667. And the median is 6. So, median 6. And the mode is 7. So, because 7 repeat 2 times. So, mode 7. What is the shape? Look at mean is 5.17, median 6, mode 7. So, if you look at here, mean 5 less than 6. So, mean is less than the median. Median 6, mode 7. So, median is less than the mode. If mean less than the median, less than the mode, your shape is left skewed ok so you have to determine by yourself looking at the mean, median and the mode so this one is another example so you can go through on yourself let's do the exercise exercise 1.3.1 determine the shape of distribution of the following data A. Mean equals to the mode, equals to the median, equals to 11. So, if all similar, it will be symmetrical. Right. B. Mean 25, mode 13, median 17. So, mean 25, median 17, mode 13. So, 25 is greater than 17, 17 is greater than 13. So, this one is mean, this one is median, this one is mode. So, if mean greater than the median, greater than the mode, it will be right skewed. 
Okay. So, done for A, done for B. C. Okay, look at the C. C, mean 5, median 17, mode 73. Okay, 5 is less than 17, 17 is less than 73. So, here is mean, here is median here is mode if mean is less than the median less than the mode then the answer will be left skewed okay so for d here you need to calculate okay you need to calculate you need to put into your data and then come out with the mean median mode and then determine the shape so you have to do it by yourself here for d so, don't forget to submit the D answer through GC. Exercise 1.3.1. Okay, number 2. The following set of data represent the number of hospitals for selected countries. Okay. A. Find the mean, median, mode and mid-range. So, we will not calculate it manually. Uh, you have to calculate it manually. Put your data in your calculator and then come up with the mean median mode and mid range so the answer has given here a mean 151.3462 median is 148 mode is 108 okay, this is the answer for a so done for a what is the answer for b is the average values calculated in a parameter or statistic so the mean that we calculate here in a parameter or statistic so, this data, population or sample, the answer is represents. So it means that this data is sample. So, the answer is statistic. Why statistic? Because this data is sample. Okay, C. What is the distribution type of, this, of the data? So, what is the shape? So, how do we determine the shape? So, we have mean... 151.346 and then we have the median median is equals to 148 and the mode is equals to 48 so, mean 151 is greater than the mode, is greater than the median. So, means that your data is right skewed. Okay, done for C. D, what is the best measure of average? We have mean, we have median, we have mode, we have mid range so what is the best measure of average to describe our data here so look at answer in c our data is skewed so because of our data is skewed the best measure of average is median okay i repeat again if your data have skewness the best measure of average or the best measure of central tendency to describe your data is median if Alright, if your data is uh, symm uh, symmetrical, doesn't have skewness, then the best measure of average is mean. Alright, so that's all for 1.3.1 measure of central tendency. Okay, we'll continue 1.3.2 measure of variation.